How are you? I'm doing very well, and I am ready to do the 20 question and answers. And um, just a warning that what I thought would be easy actually ended up giving a giving me a little more pause to think about my answers, and they weren't as simple as I thought. So, anyway, some of them might have a little backstory to them, but you can just take that as some blah, blah, blah to either listen to the content or just listen to the mm, droning of my voice and Use it to relax and fall asleep too, okay? So, thank you all for your questions. I wish I could answer them all. There were some really clever ones in there, creative, and I appreciate that. So, let's get right to it. How I got into ASMR, why start now, and, um... There were some variations of that by different people. Cody Stollard, Wendy Liu, Nolan D, Taylor Holstein, Mars00, Weird Shadows, and IB Wendy B, and Lauren. So, you know, I'll, I'll start with a part of that. And ASMR as a child, when did I first kind of, you know, tap into that? And I think it was like many of you in school when the teacher would read her books uh, during story time, sitting around on the floor in front of her, um, listening to her turn the pages and show the pictures. Um, very often the books were from the library and they were covered in a kind of a cellophane And she would show us the books with her hand, point to various parts of the pictures. And I just loved that. I was just slack-jawed and starry-eyed. So that's when I knew tri certain triggers sent me. So... Um, another time that happened a lot that I remember would be at night when I needed a little extra to help me go to sleep. My dad would come in and sit down next to me and he would rub my face like this. And he'd rub over my ear and it would, you know, and he would sing and he'd smoke his cigarette. I don't care. And that just felt so good, and it was so relaxing. It was just exactly what I needed to be knocked out. Um, the impact on my life, and that was one of the questions. I think I realized that there were methods to soothe myself, for self-soothing. I learned how to calm down in certain situations or just relax and, you know, growing up, of course, we didn't have YouTube or anything like that, but I knew that there were things that would just kind of help me calm down. Now, another part of that question was, why now? Why am I doing this now? I'm not one of the young 20-year-olds, you know, doing this. And I have to say, I owe this to my grandson, uh, my oldest grandson, who is turning 17 next month. And he said, Baba Nini, you need a YouTube channel. And I had one for like various family things, you know, nothing like this. And, he, and I said, why? And he said, because you should just talk. You should just talk and talk. And I asked him about what? He said, anything. Just talk. So, you know, he spent a lot of nights at our house, and I would 
you know, do what my father did with me and what I did with my kids, you know, rubbing their faces at night and singing to them and, you know, rubbing my hands over, you know, their ears, making that swishing sound. So I listened to my grandson and I just thought, you know, why not? If not now, when? And I just sat down at first with my iPhone, which did really crappy photos or, you know, videos. And I just started talking. And so here I am. So, um, next question was from Megan Williams. And it was, if I could meet a famous person dead or alive, who would it be? And I thought about that. And I think Nikola Tesla, because he just, I think there's a whole lot more that he had discovered than we even know. And I think that's just fascinating. And another couple would be um, Pierre and Marie, or Madame Curie, French scientists. Oh my gosh, um, she was actually Polish. But, oh, such such brilliance. And then um, Coco Chanel, she came to her, you know, profession in a roundabout way. You know, if you read the story about Coco Chanel, it's really interesting. You know, and, and her time in Paris through the occupation of the Nazis, uh, you know, things she had to do. It wasn't tough. It wasn't easy. It was tough. And I love her fashion. So. Um, the next question is from Casey Hare. And have I lived in California my whole life? And where else would I live? And where do our kids live? And the answer is, I was born and raised in California. Um, we lived in Texas for a while because my husband, before he was actually under the United name, he was under the Continental Airlines, and they merged. And so um, he was flying the 737 out of Houston, um, and he switched to the United lead the 787 out of San Francisco, and so for a while he commuted, but then, um, you know, we decided to move, and most of our kids are in California, some are in Arkansas, and we have a daughter who just finished graduate school in Florida, so they're kind of split up, and I, I liked Texas, I really did, um, so if I could live somewhere else, here in the United States, that's one place, but I've got a long list, and I have lots of other places that I would like to live um, for like three months at a time. There are places in Italy, in France, Germany, Croatia, um, you know, uh, the north, you know, uh, maybe places in England, uh, Ireland. Um, it's a long Okay, now, the next um, section is some of my favorites, like, uh, and this is from L.E.B., Armand 27, and Hidden 38. Is that like a 38, you know, revolver? Anyway, what is my favorite music? Well, it's very eclectic, and it depends on my mood. Growing up, the first album that was my favorite was this one that my mom and dad played every night, almost every night. Can you see that? It's Michael Parks, Closing the Gap. And Side A, I listen to over and over. I don't know many how many hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of times, and it's still one of my favorite albums. Um, Michael Parks was an actor who played in a role called Then Came Bronson, but he also sang, and I just love this, the 
this album, there was a song on it that my dad used to sing me called My Little Buckaroo. And he would sing that to me when I was in bed at night and he would rub my face. My mom tried to sing to us, but she was tone deaf and it just drove us. She'd try to sing and we kids would go, Mom, no, go get Dad. <laughs> and that was fine with her. So anyway, my little buckaroo. And I grew up singing that or having my dad sing that to me and I sing it to my kids and to my grandkids. So when I cook, I listen to French music, French cafe music on our, you know, something through either Pandora or, and I love French music, French cafe music. I love Andrea Bocelli. We saw him in uh, December. Um, I love Bossa Nova, um, Astrid Gilberto, um, you know, the girl from Ipanema, that I love her soft, husky voice. Um, Peter, Paul, and Mary. Oh, I love their harmonies. Um, so they're a, a favorite. I love John Denver, too, believe it or not. He's amazing. It was. I saw him live before he died, and he sounded as good on stage as he did in his studio recordings. He was that good. Um, I really liked uh, Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd as a teenager. Um, I still like them. I love Pink Floyd. I used to have the biggest crush on Jimmy Page. I loved um, the Partridge family growing up you know, and I love David Cassidy, so, oh my god, the moon, the sun, the stars revolved around that man, or that boy at the time, and I just loved him, so I used to love the Partridge family, um, I love Jack Johnson for just bopping around the house, and, you know, doing things, doing chores, so, that's a big, big answer, I know, and then books. What are my favorite books? Now, I come from a family of <sighs> big-time book collectors and readers. We grew up with lots and lots of books. Our house was a small house, but all the uh, walls had shelves for books. My parents didn't know how to throw out books. So that's how, you know, I was raised. And I'm glad for that. And I have a lot of books, too. One of the most impactful books that I say I have used throughout my life, I read in the early 70s, and it was called Seth Speaks by Jane Roberts. So the full title is Seth Speaks, The Nature of Reality. And at the time, it was the first book I'd ever read like that. Now, if you're interested in that book, I would say listen to it on YouTube. There are a lot of readers who just read a chapter from it, and it's a great way to be introduced to it. It's some heavy, meaty stuff, but it really helped me in a lot of the various things that happened in my life. So Seth Speaks, Jane Roberts, I like, um, she had another book called um, The Education of Oversoul 7. That was fantastic as well. And then um, there's another author that just moves me to my core. And um, French Whisperer, you might have to correct my pronunciation here, but his name is Antoine de Saint-Exupéry. And you may know him from the book, The Little Prince. And this, as simple as it is, is also one of my favorite books. And I love the illustrations in it. I think that should be recommended reading. The thing I love about this author is the way he 
constructs a sentence. The words he uses, even in the translation from French to English, are so beautiful and moving and soul-stirring. Um, I read and reread a sentence sometimes three or four times. It's just that beautiful. He wrote another book that is one of our favorites and has been my mom and dad's, um, my husband's, and mine, and it's Wind, Sand, and Stars. This is one of those books. He was a pilot during in the 30s, and he delivered mail. And his stories of flight are so beautiful. And a particular crash in the desert, how he describes that. And it's so beautiful. It's uh, won a National Book Award. It's... Like I said, even the translation from French to English is just amazingly done. So I would recommend this book to anyone. He's got another book, Night Flight. It's also really good. One of my favorite, favorite authors. Um, and then, let's see, what else? Um, movies, one of my favorite movies, Dances with Wolves. That's right up there at the top. I love the music. Um, I love the movie Pretty Woman because it's just a feel good. I love the movie Overboard with Goldie Hawn and her partner, Kurt Russell. That was a great one. I watch that all the time. Um, and for TV, I love Masterpiece Theater, PBS. Anything um, on Acorn, you know, I subscribe to Acorn or BritBox. I love British TV. So, somebody asked, um, let's see, Navea and Pugasaurus asked what my favorite song was. Um, and at 16, well, at 16, it was probably Stairway to Heaven by Led Zeppelin. Um, or another good one, and it's got the best drum intro. It's, I think it's called Time by Pink Floyd. Oh man, that drum. And uh, it's just so beautiful. Um, and now I have so many favorites, I can't even begin to list them all. Okay, I love this one. What would I choose for my superpowers? The top three. Now, I thought that would be easy. It wasn't. And that was from Brett Cox. Um, so the first one I thought, time travel. And I thought time travel because, oh, you know, I could go back and, you know, fix things. Prevent this from happening or, you know. And then I started thinking, no, you really can't do that because... You know, if I had certain events that didn't happen, I wouldn't have met, you know, this person. You know, these people would not have been born. And, you know, everybody's lives would be different. Because I thought, oh, I could go back and meet little baby Adolf. And, but what do you do? You know, it, it, it's so big of a change to alter history. Do we want to change our now? And I don't know, that became too big. So what I decided was it would be time travel, but with the caveat, I can't change it. I can only come back with knowledge and observe. So that's it now. The other two would be um, levitation, you know, fly around. And then I started thinking, well, that has to have a caveat too, because I don't want my hair getting messed up and, you know, the wind, you know, messing up my hair. So can I fly around without my hair or, or, you know, weather affecting me? So I've created, you know, uh, caveats for that. And then precognition, because knowing what's going to happen, that's fun, I think, if it was good stuff. 
I don't want to know about the bad stuff that's going to happen. So, anyway, that was from Brett um, Cox. And then the next one was, who are my favorite ASMR artists? Well, of course, my girl, my daughter, my adopted daughter, Maria, that goes without saying. And then, Derek, I like quiet, blah, 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 right? But I really don't want to focus on content, so I prefer foreign languages. And I found this one YouTube channel called Cuenta Limpia. And I'll put it in the description. And it's these gals, I believe it's, is it Peru or Chile? I can't remember. Somewhere there. And they do these massages and ta very tactile. And while they're doing them, they might be hitting somebody with a bunch of greenery and flowers and, you know, there's a lot of noise and, you know, like lymphatic drainage type massage. But they constantly talk under their breath and they're just going on and on and on. And I love it. I love it. I love the sounds. It's just, it just knocks me out. Okay. Um, I forgot, uh, it said TV shows, uh, when I was growing up, that was part of the favorites. Um, I loved the Mickey Mouse Club with Annette Funicello. That was great, black and white. And then, um, the Partridge Family, again, that was one of my favorite, you know, shows in the 70s. Favorite holiday. Um, Thanksgiving, I think, because it's really about family time, food, gathering around, gratitude. And I love Christmas, and I used to love going to Midnight Mass. I still do. It's very beautiful where, you know, we go. It's, oh my God, the music is just so beautiful. Um, but right now, Thanksgiving tops Christmas because of the pressure of, you know, oh, I've got to get so-and-so something, and I think I got more for that kid than the other kid. I'd better run back out. And, you know, I, I put myself under too much pressure. Okay. That was from Amanda Easton. The next one is from Trace C., and they asked, who would play me in a movie? I don't know. Um, I was thinking Kira Sedgwick. I think she's got a cool vibe. I asked my husband that, and he said Renee Russo. Okay. Hollywood, let's talk. Um, Lee Shawi asked what languages I speak, given that I travel a lot. Well, I speak Spanish. Um, not perfectly, but enough. I, we go down to Mexico a lot, so um, I, I pick it up. I pick up languages very easily, particularly when I'm staying somewhere. Um, I speak German not as well. Um, when I'm in Germany for more than a few weeks, it comes back. I'm able to do a lot more um, conversing. My father spoke to us as children in German. So, you know, it made that a little easier. A um, little bit of French, but not so much. Uh, and even in German, <laughs> I've made some really funny mistakes. Um, but that's, you know, I'm willing to try. I'm willing to put myself out there and learn. People are wonderful because they will correct you. They'll help you. So always try. Um, I love this question from Scottish Fiona. How have my kids and my husband reacted to my channel? Um, that's funny because my husband, I have all his support. He's, he loves it. He's, he's great with it. The kids don't really know. I've mentioned that I have a YouTube channel, but you know what? It goes in one ear and out the other. So 
I have this kind of funny little fantasy scenario in my head on who's going to find out first what one of their friends might see them and think is that so-and-so's mom and they mention it to them and they find out and ask me. So I'm waiting for that to happen. It hasn't happened. I don't know if it will. Um, I might just tell them. So that's that. Um, Megan Fry asks, says, I look very together. And um, who inspires me? And how has my style evolved? That's a great question, Megan. I'm not always all together. Um, if I know I don't have to go out anywhere, I will be in shorts and a t-shirt and flip-flops. Um, but if I do go out, I am put together. And I think I am very inspired by... Marianne Lecour, and I'll put her name in. She's got a YouTube channel, and she lives near Normandy, I believe, in, in France. And she just kind of really talks about style, not fashion, how to have classic style, and how to add pieces into your wardrobe that you can use with, you know, multiple outfits, wear in different ways, and be classy. Um, you know, I think, and so how has my style evolved? Well, when I was 16, I wore two tops and, you know, bell-bottom jeans and platform shoes, you know, and puka shells. Um, so not anymore. Uh, another gal I like to watch is Frederique Bros, B-R-O-S, and I'll put her name in as well. And she's the same thing. It's really looking classic, um, even casual uh, classic. And then, of course, Coco Chanel is just, um, she's an idol of mine. So, okay, Amy across the pond, my girl Amy, she <laughs> asked a question that made me laugh. She said, I've got five kids. How do I find me time? <laughs> You don't. <laughs> That's what made me laugh with five kids. Good luck. It's hard. Um, they own your time. So the answer is really any way you can. If that means going out shopping and taking some extra time while somebody else is looking after the kids, then you take that extra time. You know, if it's finding a girlfriend to just have your own you know, Friday night, something or other, then you do that. You know, as a busy mom, you do what works, and you do what works for you. So, any way you can, Amy. Um, okay, Jade asks, what is one of my life's biggest lessons? Biggest life lesson learned. Oh my God. Two things. The first is that not everything has an answer. There isn't a reason why something happens. Not everything fits into a perfect little box. There aren't always explanations for things. Stuff happens. It just does, without reason, without rhyme, without explanation, and without understanding. And it's just up to me to figure out how to live with that, work with that, move on from that, live with it, learn from it, grow from it. So quit trying to understand it all. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes life is not understandable. And then something else important, I think, that I've learned is that about myself, I've never once regretted being kind or choosing kindness, whereas I have regretted 
having snapped or had a short temper or losing my temper, I typically regret that. I understand sometimes we blow up and we have our, you know, our bombs go off. But typically, I'm kicking myself for that. I've never regretted being patient or kind. So that's a big lesson. Um, thank you, Jade, for that one. All right, I can't remember who asked. I forgot to write this one down, but I think it was a girl. She said, I seem very self-assured, completely myself. And what advice do I have for others who have trouble feeling that way? And then she tagged on, am I extroverted or introverted? Well, I think I'm a balance of both. It depends on my mood. I think I tend toward the introverted, but I've learned how to be more extroverted. Does that make sense? Now, advice for those who have trouble feeling self-assured. Be authentic. Be you. You can't be anything else anyway. And if you have to be something else in order for someone to like you or love you, or want to be around you. It's not going to work in the ultimate, in, in the end. Because you can't be anything other than yourself and you want people who love you for you. So for me, here I am. Um, you're seeing, you know, the good, or the, the, the good or, you know, put together sides. You know, I'm not coming to you first thing in the morning when I wake up. It's not what you want to see. Um, but I think being okay with what's authentic for me is enough. And if you don't like it, that's on you. It's not on me. You move on, you know, and that's just my feeling. No hard, no hard feelings about that. Um, I'm not everyone's cup of tea. I'm not, and that's okay. I don't have to be. Those who do like me, those who do love me, I'm happy with because I don't have to be something I'm not. So that's what's important. Um, I love this question, and this is from... Oh, I didn't write it down, I'm sorry. She asked, what are the five most beautiful things in the world? I would say, number one, the people. I've been all over the world, and it's the people that are the most beautiful. Um, in every country, just beautiful. Uh, children, a subset of that, they're, they're our future, and I just love watching kids. Um, architecture, I love the architecture of Europe all over various countries. Um, yeah, that, and landscapes, you know, the mountains, our national parks here in the United States, Yellowstone, Yosemite, Glacier, Grand Tetons. Um, they're all very, very beautiful, breathtaking. The ocean, you know, music. You know, going back to people, um, I was in Russia. We were in Russia, I think it was late 2017. And we were in St. Petersburg. You know, and here's a little side note here. Maria's been chasing me down. Maria, gentle whispering, see? She was on the East Coast. And I remember thinking, she should be on the West Coast at least for a period of time. Guess what? She comes out to my area. I go to St. Petersburg, and it wasn't long after that she went there. See, I think she was seeking me out. Anyway, when we were in St. Petersburg, we decided we wanted to go to the ballet at the Hermitage. 
and they were playing a, a performing Swan Lake and I didn't really have something really nice to wear. All my travel clothes were kind of for a day, you know, packing around. So I wanted to go buy a blouse. So we went into a few little shops down from our hotel. And we went into, into this one shop. And this tall, kind of a big boned Russian woman, very serious face. She had a, a jaw carved out of granite. And she was serious and set and didn't crack a smile. And I tried, you know, to make her smile. <clears throat> she said something to me. And I tried to let her know what I wanted, that I was looking for a blouse. So she led me to this area and she would hold something up and it just wasn't what I wanted. I remember thinking, that's so old ladyish. Anyway, um, she, she handed me a few and I thought, okay, I'll try some on. So I went into the, you know, behind the curtain, the dressing room. And I'm trying things on and she would just open the curtains and hand me another one, you know, face set in stone. And, okay, hello. So I tried this one blouse on. It was black and I'll put a picture in. And I liked it and I thought this will be perfect and I can wear this, you know, forever. Add to my pieces. Well, as I was coming out, to show my husband because I had it on, she had another blouse for me and the way I turned and the way she turned, we collided, her arm collided with my face and I was wearing my glasses at the time and it dug in right here and just made a little red mark, nothing big. And it dug in and then my glasses went flying across the room and I, and I grabbed my face this woman changed like night and day. Her face softened, her mouth dropped open, and she grabbed me and she held me into her chest and she started just rubbing my head and do 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 all this Russian baby talk. I know there were apologies in there. And at first I was like, it's okay, it's okay. But then I just thought, oh my God, no, I'm going to soak up every ounce of her love that I can get. This is life. This is beauty. And so she, I just melted into her and she just, do, 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 do. that's Russian. Do, 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 do. And she just, you know, oh, loved me and was so tender. Then she held my face in her hands and she looked at me, are you okay? You know, I, I know that's what she was saying. So I bought a couple of things there, but that experienced for me was one of the highlights of my trip. And I would do it again and again. Go ahead, whack me in the face if that makes you love me. <laughs> Not really. So anyway... Um, what brings me the most peace? Brett, Brit M asked this. What brings me the most peace? And that is knowing, or I should say that is when all my kids are happy and grandkids. Um, life is hectic. And at their age, you know, they're in their 30s, most of them. One hit her 40s. That's a lot of discovery is going on and a lot of figuring life out and I know it. And so some of this I have to just stand on the sidelines and watch and allow them to learn. Um, of course, I always ask if they'd like me to weigh in because I have all the answers. But um, and what, what touches me is when they say, yes, mom, tell me, what would you do? What do you think? What is your advice? Like, yes. Um, but that, when, when I'm, when my kids, when the kids are all doing well, I'm at my happiest, period. So, the next one is a great one. It's from Abby Estrella Flores. A.D. Rose, ASMR, and Breezy. 
and it says, what is a favorite memory as a child or what memory do I run to for comfort? And I love that because I've got several. But the memory that I go to, and I know I've mentioned this several times, is my dad singing to me, rubbing my ears at night. Um, I needed a little extra help going to sleep. I just needed to have my mind calm down, my mind quieted. And this album that I showed you, Closing the Gap by Michael Parks, has a song on it called My Little Buckaroo. And my dad would sing it to me. And I sang that to my kids and grandkids when they would come and spend the night. And it was just the loveliest song. If you can find that by Michael Parks, Little Buckaroo, he sings it with his mother. It goes like this. I'll sing you a little bit. Close your sleepy eyes, my little buckaroo. Now the light of the western skies is shining down on you. Don't you know it's time for bed? Another day is through. So close your eyes, my little buckaroo. Don't you realize, my little buckaroo? It was from the little acorn that the oak tree grew. Just remember that your dad was once a kid like you. So go to sleep, my little buggeroo. And then they hummed together and it was mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It was just so beautiful. I know I'm not a singer, but I sing that song to my kids. And the other day I was on the phone with one of our sons and I said, son, what is a memory you have, a fond memory of your childhood? And he said, you sitting on my bed, scratching my back or rubbing my ear and singing or talking to me. And he said, that's my go-to. That made me happy. So, what are my parents like? Liberty Toe asked that. And um, you've heard a little bit about my dad. He was uh, super fun, strong, funny, extremely intelligent. Oh my goodness, he knew everything. Really, I pretend he did. Um, he was artistic. He was the center of attention all the time. He just had this magnetic personality. Um, but he was very fair and honest, and he believed in integrity. And, you know, if you didn't have your word, you had nothing. And we learned that you know, growing up with him. My mom is much more quiet. She's a little more reserved, very sweet, gentle, kind, intelligent. Um, and something I really admire in her is her ability to see the good in, in everyone. She defaults to not being judgmental. but seeing the good in you and me. God bless her. She survived me. She's an, she's, she's an angel. 
she, she is truly an angel. Um, Elena13 asks, what are the little things the younger generation should let go of and or appreciate in life? Oh, I love that question, Elena. And I think my answer is this. Nothing is owed to you. Society doesn't owe you anything. No one owes you anything. If you want something, you go out and you get it. You work for it. You make it happen. You are the creator of your own destiny. Period. That is what I truly believe. When my kids wanted something, they had to work for it. Um, you know, go mow lawns, go babysit, go walk dogs, things like that. You know, do chores around the house. But nothing was owed to you. You had no privilege to something just based on your want and desire. Um, I'd also say own your life. Own your life. All of it. All the experiences in it. If you were there, you have ownership in it, if that makes any sense. When you own it, you're not a victim of it. And sometimes that's hard because stuff does happen to us. But you create your own path and you also should be grateful for those who have gone before you and created a path for you. And that doesn't mean you have to walk that path. You can choose another path if you want. And I think getting in touch with the power that you have to create your own life on your terms is really important. Okay. You have choices. Have faith in yourself to step out. Try something new. Create a, a life you think you want. And you know what? We make mistakes. It may not be something that works out for you. Boom, you're not a tree. Move to a different place. You know, do something different. Mistakes are okay. You don't have to always make the right choice. We learn by making the wrong choices sometimes. So whether it works out or not, don't be afraid to try or be afraid, but do things anyway. What's that saying? Feel the fear, but do it anyway. Um, okay, so Baronessa asks a question. She says, you've traveled all over the world. What is your best meal? on the planet? Oh, I love this question. And I had to think about this. The number one was a Georgian restaurant in St. Petersburg. And I'm going to put some pictures in so you can see. Um, it was called, Maria, you might have to help me here, Ginkalnaya, Ginkalnaya on the Neva. It was absolutely unforgettable. I didn't know what Georgian food was, but let me tell you, this was mind-blowing. I'm salivating thinking about it. So look at that picture. Oh my God. I, my wish would be that Maria would talk about this menu from their site because it's, it's soul-stirring. It, it's just, it was Heaven. Heaven. Um, there was also, in Croatia, on the island of Kirk, K-R-K, a little town at the very end called Starobashka. And it was amazing. We had so much good food that night. It was Croatian food, but I think it was a lot of just a mix of European food. And it was just unbelievably good. And then the third one that I remember that is actually in the U.S., and I think I've mentioned this before, was the Capitol Grill in Seattle. 
that we had a we had such an amazing meal that night and we've been to Capitol Grills all over the United States but it never rose to that occasion of excellence so great question Baronessa oh boy and then this last one how do you deal with the trauma of loss and that was Saint Sanity ASMR. Well, I think the answer is I just had to. I just had to. There was no script for me. There was no book to read. It was just, you know, get through it. Deal with it and get through it. From the time I lost my brother at 16, you know, that was the awakening into knowing that life can be turned upside down in, in an instant. But I knew that I was the one to control me around all that. Yes, I was sad. Yes, it was devastating. Nothing I say can ever downplay my grief in certain things in my life. Um... But I learned that that was important for me to establish how I was going to handle tragedies or hard stuff when it happened. I knew, I think I told you about that experience. My higher self knew, Jeannie, this is going to happen in life. How will you, how will you hold it? How will you handle it? What will you do with it? I'm not going to wear it like an anchor and a chain around my neck. I'm not. I'm going to use it to be better, deeper, stronger, more loving. That was my goal. Now, moving forward, a lot of stuff happened in my life. And like I said, it would be funny if it weren't so true. And holy cow, when kids, when we had lots of kids all at home, it seemed like they were always in a cast. At least one kid was always in a cast. And I was a good mom. I was, you know, involved with them. We had, you know, really a, a good family life. But somebody was always getting hurt and sometimes, you know, extremely hurt. I was telling one daughter, you know, you can't just run out in the street when you're going over to the bus. You got to look both ways. What do you think happened that very morning? She runs out, boom, and a car hits her. It was a van, actually, a minivan ran over her. And I had just gotten through telling her, don't run into the street, look both ways. She was in a wheelchair for a long time. You know, she, luckily it was just her leg that got run over and crushed. But she missed out on a lot of school. She was in the hospital a lot, surgeries, and she's fine now. But, oh my God, the kids, I mean, my gray hairs have names with them. One time, uh, our, our oldest son fell on his rollerblades and broke his wrist. You know, broke, you know how you land like that? It broke. Okay, let's take you to the ER, get you fixed up. Well, not a week or two later, another son, I'm talking on the phone, and I see this boop out of the corner of my eye, and it's the tree outside. Sure enough, he fell out of the tree, and uh, he comes running in, and his arm is clearly broken. So now I've got two boys in casts. It's like, you're all not, uh, aren't going with me, you know, at the same time somewhere. And then about that same time, Another daughter was doing gymnastics and she was doing a cartwheel without any hands. Well, at the last minute, she put a hand down and her arm twisted and rotated and she broke both the ulna and the radius and had to have surgery and plates and pins put in. So she was in a cast. Another daughter fell off um, uh, the pyramid, cheerleading pyramid broke her arm. I mean, it was just constant to the point where I just deal with it. My falling apart or being hysterical won't change it or make it better. 
So I handle emergencies now, and we've had a lot of them. House fires, I've told you about. That was one. There was actually another one. <laughs> My husband, accident, he accidentally started that from a... It was a gas, um, he was turning on the hot tub to heat it up and he didn't know there was a gas leak and something caught and took half the house. <laughs> anyway, life is going to happen. You have choices about how you deal with it. For me, I act, I keep everybody grounded. And I say to myself, Jeannie, you can fall apart later, but right now you're needed. Your presence of mind is needed. And so that's exactly what I would do is stay, you know, cool, calm, and collected and deal with my emotions or any falling apart later. So anyway, that's that. I enjoyed these. It's been fun. Um, I may or may not have gotten to all of them. Sorry if I missed some. I missed a lot. I'm from There were just way too many. Thank you all. Thank you for your lovely questions. Thank you for your lovely comments. I am not Princess Di. We may be related. But I am not her. Um, I've been told I look like a lot of people. And um, maybe I do a little bit of a lot of different people. So, anyway, thank you. I'll sign off for now. And um, I'm just so happy with everybody and all your great comments. And I truly appreciate you. So, I bid you adieu. I bid you peace. And I'll see you in the next video. I have something special coming up for you. Bye for now.